And any day I get to talk to the Rocket, Jalen Richard is a good day. Man, Jalen, it's good to see you, bro. We were talking a second ago that the COVID stuff has made it so hard, so challenging to spend time with you. And, and you know you're one of our favorite guys. So it's good to see you, albeit, you know, through the screen and the cameras and all that good yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, it's good seeing you too, Eddie, man. It's been a minute. We miss you down this way, man. I know. I'll be back I'm one day. One day. Once, yeah. we, once this craziness, once everyone gets healthy and all that stuff, I'll be back. Don't you worry. And yeah. we'll be hanging out sooner than later. But... I mean, we talk about how crazy of a year this has been, right? Obviously, we're still navigating these COVID protocols. We're still trying to do everything the best and healthiest and smartest way to make sure everyone gets from A to Z. But have you had a chance now, as we get ready for the Bengals on Saturday, to really be like, yo, this was the craziest season for so many other reasons too, but somehow, some way, this group made it to the postseason? Or, or is that is that like a conversation you're going to have in like a month or two? Um. I think it's a conversation I might have in a month or two. I have thought about it, though. Like, man, it's just so crazy, like ups and downs as a whole, as a team, um, and then different players dealing with different things personally on and off the field. So uh, for us to still be here and still, you know, have a chance for our goal, which is to win a Super Bowl, is so exciting to know that, you know, we stuck it out through all the adversity, kept working, kept grinding, um, you know, again, had our highs and lows and just, you know, stayed at the task at hand. And now we're here with an opportunity. So it's definitely something I think about now. But, I, you know, I kind of try to just focus at the next step in the next game. But um, definitely, you know, in a month from now, I'm going to look back like, man, this was a crazy season. And it was pretty wild that we still were able to do what we do. And hopefully I'm saying that with a ring on my finger. Absolutely. And speaking of those highs and lows, man, I mean, this has been a season that's you know, been filled with all the emotions, the, the excitement of games like Sunday, and then obviously some of the, the low moments that have occurred as well. I mean, at any point during the year, I mean, from the outside looking in, and we've talked about it, I haven't been as kind of in sync with you guys as I normally would, but it feels like you guys have stayed pretty together and pretty tight-knit through all, all this craziness. Has there, was there a moment at all where you kind of felt like, okay, like I know we're dealing with a lot of stuff, but we got the right group to kind of carry us through to the end? I, I've been saying that since I got around this team. This is probably the close, the most, the closest team I've been on since being in the league. As far as hanging with each other, the camaraderie, locker room camaraderie, what we can do outside of the building together. This team, like, is really close. So when all that stuff was happening, it was it had us down, but it also even brought us even more closer together. And the character of this team is just amazing so like that all together has allowed us to again just beat that the odds beat the adversity uh because we just like a band of brothers you know we a family and again this team is the closest team i've been on and and you see how we play together and we you see the intensity you see the love for each other when we play and how hard we fight for our brother on, the, on our left and on our right so uh you know being as close as we are has definitely helped us this year, I think. And it's going to help us uh, in this road in the playoffs. You know, and speaking of the, the performance on the field, obviously you guys are in the midst of a, of a pretty incredible run, four in, four in a row right now, four essentially must-win games, four gotta-have-them yeah, games. And, gotta have them. And, and you look at what you guys, what the running game has, do, has done, what you have done, what Josh has done, uh, you know, everyone, the collective. I mean, what has been working on the ground the past month? Because there were moments during the season where it felt like that, that particular area of the game had a hard time getting going. But the past month, I mean, you guys have been such a catalyst for what this team has been able to do offensively. Yeah, we've just been able to just stick with it. You know, um, when we have those runs that, you know, that we like, that might get stopped a little bit. Um, Ole and um, Coach Cables and just the offensive staff as a whole has just been really um, put like a, a task, a mission on our hands to to – to be, be that, to be physical, uh, to be a run team, to be a four-minute team, be able to close the game out, and those type of, they put those challenges up, upon us uh, a couple weeks ago, and um, we've been doing it, um, you know, staying on schedule with Josh, downhill running, giving him the ball. O-line has been exploding off the ball, uh, more locked in on the details of who, who we're blocking, the uh, where's the soft spot in the defense um, and then offensive coaches again doing a great job of scheming up into that game to the game day uh, to go against that defense in the run game so uh, a combination of all those things again uh, the challenges they put out there for us and then we've been just answering the challenges we've been like hey let's keep running it let's keep you know this is grown man football and we want to be a grown man team and we're an effort-based team so uh, you know, running the ball is, is, is really strenuous. So, you know, we go out there and give it our all in the effort. And um, 
you know, again, stay on schedule and keep running it. I mean, you talk about Josh, too, and you look at Josh the past couple of weeks, but on Sunday night in particular, I mean, he has his biggest, his best, his most productive game in the biggest moment for this team, man. I mean, what does it say just about Josh and, and how he's stayed ready and how he's been rocking and rolling, and then it comes Sunday night, hey, Josh, we need to go eat. We need yeah. to go eat big time, and he delivers. Man, hey, bro, look, bro is he a different animal, you know. He the toughest guy, the toughest guy I've seen with the things he, you know, has it deal with you know being a bell cow and you know you get your nicks and bruises but he's he's one of the toughest guys I know and seen play this game since I've been in the league for six years and man the sky's the limit for that cat man and we are he's the heartbeat of the team uh you know I, I tell him sometimes when he lay man take us home you know I tell him take us home because he can do that he can really finish the game he can do anything in and out he can block a uh, great teammate um great runner um, great person, you know what I'm saying? Just a humble person just to talk to and talk about life. So all around, man, he has it all. So, I mean, the sky's the limit for him, and, um, you know, we, we, we'll go as far as, you know, he'll take us for real. You know, I'm so glad you brought up the kind of stuff that we don't see in terms of Josh. And obviously not giving away any state secrets or anything, but, like, you and the rest of the backs have such a good view for what it takes for him to get ready to go out there and do what he needs to do on Sunday or game yeah. day, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Like, for some of the like for some of the people that don't know, I would say, like, the stuff that he's got to go through, like, kind of try to, like, paint us a picture of all the stuff that he has to do during the week so he's ready to rock come game day. Yeah, I mean – um, just think about the running back position. I mean, we're a position where we have everybody on the field trying to take our head off. <laughs> you know, we get handed the ball, and you have 11 guys trying to come get you. And um, mentally, at, at running back, you got to come in. You got to know, uh, you know, assignment alignment, first of all. We got to know the runs coming in, you know, the soft spot. We got to know blitz pickup so, you know, we can protect D.C., on the mental side of things, then on then on the body side of things, again, um, when you're the bell cow, you're taking a lot of the hits. You're taking a lot of the, you know, people landing on you. you falling, getting hit, turned, twisted, different type of ways. So the treatment throughout the week is just major, you know, hot tub, cold tub, massages, multiple massages probably. Um, it just takes a lot, you know, and a lot of people don't really see that. You know, um, sometimes I like to look at this like, like modern day gladiators like you know you go out there get beat up and then you know you got six days to try to recover to get back as close to 100 percent as possible and some of those weeks you don't get all the way back to 100 percent. some of those weeks before the game you can only get back to 90 so you got to go out there and be on 90 or be on 80 or 75 and then eventually that gets back up and maybe four more weeks later now you finally back at 100 but everybody thought you was at 100 those other times but you really were at 80 75 90 but that's the game we play, and it's a 100% injury rate in the NFL. And um, being a running back, you had one of those higher positions that it's almost a guaranteed you're going to get hurt. So, man, he just – we all go through a lot. But, you know, being a bell cow, you definitely go through a lot uh, physically to be able to stay out there. So, to all those bell cows out there, bro, much respect to the running backs. And, and, dude, and like Derek says, man, I mean, you talk about it. No one's 100% at this time of year, but Derek says it all the time. No, no one cares. No one right? cares. No one no cares. No one cares, bro. No one cares. So, you got to go out there. You got to do it, you know. You, you got to feed your family. You got to help your team win. You know, you got to do what you got to do. Exactly. Let's go back to Sunday night for a sec because I'm up in the press box in my perch, right, looking at all you guys do your thing from above. We're in third and 23. I see the rocket out on the field. I'm thinking, okay, great. Nice little dump off to Jalen. Maybe we get six to seven yards, give, uh, give AJ a little room to operate. But you say, no, sir. I'm going to take this third and 23. I'm going to run. I'm going to make, like, four guys miss. I'm going to get a first down. Like, that, that to me was a play that kind of symbolized so many good things about Sunday night, right? Now, be honest with me. When you guys are in the huddle, do you honestly think that this third and 23 running play is going to go for a first down? Well, I hadn't ran a draw in so long, so I had, I, if I'm not mistaken, I asked DC again. I said, you show, that's what you called. <laughs> so when, and he looked at me like, yeah, 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 we're going to run this. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I ain't ran a draw in like two years. Well, <laughs> I was like, I hope they don't think it's coming. <laughs> and they didn't. They didn't think it was coming. And um, I just hit it. Man, Andre did a great job of uh, releasing, getting up the field, able to get a body on some guys. And I just, you know, kept my feet turning and was able to get uh, – I was just trying to get as much as I can. I knew I was close to the first down, but I just didn't quite know. So I was just, you know, churning my feet as, as much as I can before I hit the ground and, you know, was able to help my team get that first down, which was pivotal. And then, you know, we go on to win the game. So – 
And then they made you wait. They made you wait for it too, though, because they had to go to review and all yeah. that kind of stuff. I mean, what's that like for you guys? Like, do you do you're, you're, you got to be sitting there like, oh, I got that, I got that, I know. Like, well, yeah. the cameras take care, but I know I got that. Yeah, usually in those situations, we usually everybody stop and looks up at the jumbotron, um, the screen and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, the media people always you know put a replay up there. Um, I know some people told me at, at home like the TV copy had the, I guess the yellow line was off uh, digitally on TV, so a lot of people thought I was just completely short. Um, but you know, uh, I wasn't. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a little, anx- you get a little anxiety a little yeah. bit. Cause you're like, man, I know I got it, you know? So everybody kind of chattering and stuff. And then, you know, when the ref comes out and said, you know, everybody cheers and it's fun. Like, yeah, I knew I had it, you know? <laughs> so have you ever, have you ever, don't lie to me. Have you ever been like, yeah, yeah, I got it. And you know, you don't have it. Um, not that I can remember, <laughs> not, not that I can remember. I haven't had like, I don't think no close ones like that. Um. Yeah. Nah. No. No. Close. Well, that's like good. That. I listen. Yeah. We have. We've had enough excitement this year. Yeah. I just want no more reviews. Just straight first downs. Yeah. You know, gain a game of four. Excuse me. Gain a four on on third and three. Make everyone's life easier. For sure. But <laughs> looking ahead now to Saturday, man. I mean, an exciting day. Obviously for the guys in the locker room like yourselves, but organizationally for this city, a mm-hmm. huge day. The first postseason game for the Las Vegas Raiders. It's your first time back in the playoffs since your rookie year. Yeah. So like. What are how are we feeling now? A couple of days. I woke, out from I woke game up time. different this morning. I woke up like I drank some coffee before <laughs> I woke up. You know what I'm saying? Just up, just excited for the uh, opportunity. Understanding that, um, again, just when I wake up any day, I'm like, oh, well, somebody might have passed last night. So it's a blessing just to wake up, and um, it's a blessing to be in the playoffs because obviously we got some other members in the league that are not in the playoffs. So it was just a great feeling to know that um, I'm still playing football. I was telling some of my teammates last week that um, I wasn't ready to go home uh i was thinking about all the hard work i did in the off season running to you throw up or you know out in the heat i'm down in the south when i train so out in the heat all day muggy and um you know i just wasn't ready i i figured i i thought i knew i needed to play more football i was like man, i'm not ready I, I did all this work for just this little bit like nah we got to keep going so uh i was really ecstatic just to wake up this morning and know that we got another chance and then i was super excited for four knowing that you know what happened last time with him and um the season he was having and how it ended and he wasn't able to go to that playoff game and for, to see him now come in like he was glowing i was like yes like you know what i'm saying like i'm happy for you and you know he finna get a chance for his playoff game you know, I'm glad that you brought up Derek because Alec and I were talking about that on, on Sunday night as he walks behind you right now, uh, that, you know, because of all the circumstances that surrounded the last trip to the postseason, Derek didn't get that moment. Yeah. And and for a dude that has meant so much to this organization, for a dude that has been out in front of the media every single week, he's got to answer questions and he's got to do this, good, bad, in between. For him to get this chance on Saturday, regardless of what happens on the field, like just as a human being, like that's pretty cool that he's finally gonna get this chance after after all these years. Yeah, it's super cool. This is what this is what we do it for. You know what I mean? This what this what same thing I was saying in the off season. DC worked worked his tail off in the off season. Worked his tail off. I'm pretty sure he wasn't ready to go home neither. We still wanna play football. This is the easy part, you know. This is the fun part where we get to go play football. You're not training, you're not doing all this other stuff. You playing the game that, you know, we were one born to play and what we've been playing since since we were kids so uh just excited that he gets this opportunity again you know a lot of people don't get the opportunity to play in the league a lot of people don't get the opportunity to go to a playoff a lot of people never go to a super bowl so we're doing things that um you know will be memories forever yeah and look i'm not ready to go home either man yeah. i'm still ready to keep working nah, yeah, i'm Eddie, still ready yeah, to work Eddie, long hours yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm ready to work Jalen. Yeah, we're yeah. not done yet Trav's still working exactly we're working we're <laughs> grinding sam's out there everyone in the yeah, control is doing their thing everybody everyone's working but hey man dude it was so good to catch up with you like i said man we miss seeing you on a day-to-day like we do in normal times but yeah. i promise i'm gonna get back down there soon we're gonna link up uh, i'm so happy for your success i mean we talk about all the time i'm so happy that you've you know you got the kids you got the wife you're crushing life you're yep. crushing things on the football field and uh do do me a favor go out there crush it on saturday too so for i can sure. bring you back and we can we can keep talking about how much more work we have to do yeah, all right got to man appreciate you eddie all right bro I'll talk to you soon later